Introducing a completely redesigned experience that you can sense. And that senses you. The new Dell Latitude laptops bring your work closer to you. Tonight, the armed carjack suspect who went to great heights. See how this six-hour rooftop standoff came to an end. A man's dramatic escape as flames took hold of the Parafield Gardens hub. Air alert, we have breaking news on a police warning about drones in the skies of Adelaide. Sit out to stay healthy. The new plan to combat concussion in kids and community sport. And who wants to be a millionaire? Fingers crossed for the nation's richest ever lotto draw. This is Adelaide's Nine News with Brenton Raglis and Kate Collins. Good evening. A six-hour rooftop standoff has ended with the arrest of an alleged carjacker who's accused of threatening a rideshare driver with a knife. Nine News cameras capturing the siege at Paralawi. Heavily armed police surrounding the wanted man as a friend below begged him to give himself up. Above the ground, but under guard, there'd be no point arguing. This was only going to end one way. A masked man detained on Matala Road at 10 this morning, ending an ordeal that began with a carjacking almost eight hours earlier. It's very stressful, dangerous man, because they take knife at my neck. A rideshare driver telling us he was attacked by the suspect and another man after they booked a ride at Parafield Gardens at 2.20am. Like, hang on and give all the wallets and phone, everything. They also took his Toyota sedan, heading off towards Salisbury Highway before dumping the vehicle at Paralawi. A tracking system on board had allowed police to follow a foot chase before one of the offenders climbed onto a roof. <laughs> Star Force officers swarming the area, He's about to jump into the third house over. ensuring the man had nowhere to run. He's just been jumping from um, shed to shed all night. As the sun rose, the man remained perched on top of a greenhouse, police keeping their distance, fearing their suspect would fall. We needed to bring it to a safe conclusion, so that is the reason why it's taken several hours and, and lots of resources. The uh, suspect in question was reasonably calm. He just did not want to be arrested. A friend of the man brought to the scene pleaded for him to come down, and eventually he did. The 22-year-old from Hectorville taken away and charged. He's damaged um, our roof um, and damaged our tiles. He wrecked my fruit tree, he's wrecked my grapevine and my passion fruit. Police are still searching for the second suspect. Ben Avery, Nine News. A northern suburbs man has escaped an intense blaze as fire bursts through the roof of his Parafield Gardens home. Witnesses telling Nine News the flames were 10 foot high and almost reaching neighbouring homes. A bright glow fills the night sky. Parafield Gardens residents say they could feel the heat as flames rip through the home. Firefighters quickly called in to help contain the blaze just before midnight. Crews making entry to start a primary search. The sole occupant making it out with his pet cats just in time. All persons have been accounted for. Uh, they are in the hands of SAS. It took 45 minutes to extinguish the fire on Barsley Avenue, waking neighbours. We didn't realise... Uh... It, we thought it was fireworks going off again. I was just chilling on the lounge and I heard some, a lot of glass smashing and I smelt a lot of like um, electric smoke. Firefighters were able to stop the spread but unable to save the house. The roof completely caved in. It's the second blaze here in a matter of months. The big shed out the back still standing but ruined after another fire here in August. Police arrived on the scene today, speaking to neighbours and investigating what sparked the blaze. Ten foot flames coming out the roof, extremely intense heat. It's freaky, we thought the next door neighbour's house was going to catch fire. The home has been owned by the same family for 30 years and is currently being rented out. Nine News understands the home was recently renovated, costing the owner up to $50,000. Scary. Mm. I think it might be the end of the house now. Gus McDonald, Nine News. Meantime, a state heritage listed church building in North Adelaide has been swamped by smoke during a fire this morning. Emergency services were called to Tint Street at 9am and contained the blaze before it spread. The former Methodist chapel, constructed in 1858, suffered smoke damage while furniture stored inside was destroyed.
It was a little bit of panic thinking how bad is this going to get because it was just like progressively getting worse and by the time that I came back out of the hotel um, you pretty much couldn't see across the road. It was just thick black smoke. Investigations into the cause of the fire are ongoing. To breaking news and police have just issued an urgent warning to drone users. Shannon McDonald, they're concerned about aircraft. That's right. Okay, and they say there's been a series of near misses that have recently been reported where recreational drones can be seen flying dangerously close to other aircraft and even people. Now, it's understood that alert has been prompted by this vision here at the Adelaide 500 where Nine News exclusively revealed the vision of a where a drone can be seen dangerously flying close to a fighter jet while it was flying above the track. Now, no major accidents have so far happened and have been avoided, but police say but the rise in the use of recreational drones means the public needs to be made aware of the rules. Now, they include not flying over crowds, such as festivals, sporting events and busy beaches and parks, as well as not flying above 120 metres from the ground. We're told the Civil Aviation Safety Authority is conducting a series of investigations into these reports and police tonight are reminding anyone who is caught flouting the rules could be fined. Thank you, Shannon. Dozens of workers were evacuated from Australia Post's airport facility this afternoon after the discovery of a suspicious package. The nature of the package is not known, but police and other emergency service personnel were called in about three this afternoon to ensure the distribution centre on Butler Boulevard was safe before staff could return to work about an hour later. A medical episode will be investigated in the death of a 70-year-old Engel farm man in a crash at Walkley Heights. His Mitsubishi sedan smashed into a stoby pole on the side of Wright Road just before 10 last night. The driver was the only person in the car. Junior and community sporting clubs across the nation are being urged to adopt sweeping new concussion protocols in a bid to prevent devastating long-term effects. But see, anyone who suffered a severe head knock sidelined for at least 21 days. Experts saying the brain needs the extra time to heal even after the symptoms are gone. This is Indy Pinelli, laying concussed in a hospital bed after she was sling tackled to the ground playing footy. It was one of those incidents where you probably don't want to have as a parent. It was two years ago and Dad Jamie says there weren't formal concussion protocols in place around the game. When she got that severe knock, unfortunately the game continue to go. Now the Australian Institute of Sport has laid out what it says should be the universal approach to concussion for all junior and amateur sport, recommending players sit out a minimum 21 days after suffering a concussion. That's at least a week to be free of symptoms and another two for the brain to recover. And that's to allow this neuroinflammation to settle, to allow these uh, metabolic changes to return to normal status. It also recommends extended time out for those who suffered multiple concussions. The guidelines designed for children as young as six right through to adults involved in community sport, where 95% of the estimated one to 200,000 concussions occur in Australia each year. And following this protocol, we believe uh, individuals be less at risk of future concussions and less at risk of some of the other complications of concussion, which are musculoskeletal injuries or prolonged symptoms. The push now is to get the nation's major sporting bodies to endorse the approach, but the AFL, NRL and Cricket Australia remain undecided. Anything we do at the minute it happens could help them continue to play and their player welfare can only help. Samantha Hogan, Nine News. South Australians are now waiting longer to get into a GP than anyone else in the nation. It's data put together by the Productivity Commission in its snapshot of Australia's health system. But it also reveals the time waiting for an ambulance is actually improving. Camped outside our emergency departments, the symptom of a system under immense pressure, which has become all too familiar. There is still so much more to be done when it comes to improving the health system here in South Australia. The latest national checkup on the health system by the Productivity Commission, ruling South Australia's ambulance response times remain the worst in the country, but it also reveals there was at least some improvement with the change of government. In Labor's first year, South Australians waited an average of 55 minutes for an ambulance that was down from 71 minutes the year before. The improvement in our response times 
uh, in the past year has been better than anywhere else in the country. Now's not the time for the government to be giving themselves a big old pat on the back. And that's because the report also reveals just how hard it is to get into a GP in Adelaide. More than half of all patients forced to wait 24 hours or more to get an appointment. Again, that makes South Australia the worst in the nation. The GP crisis, of course, forcing more people to walk through the doors of our emergency departments. The state government says it remains committed to hiring more hospital staff and building more beds. At the same time that we're throwing every possible state resource at our public hospitals, we need the federal government doing that work of investing in GPs as well. Now is the time for them to be rolling up their sleeves and getting on with delivering their promise to fix ramping. Michaela Kamarek, Nine News. More cash in your pocket soon. That's the pledge of the Albanese government tonight, with inflation falling and tax cuts on the horizon. The Prime Minister says he won't pressure the Reserve Bank on interest rates, but one Labor Premier wasn't so diplomatic. There's been lots of advice for the Reserve Bank lately, but rarely like this. Now that inflation has turned a corner, they should act just as quickly to cut rates as they did to increase rates. Labor Premier Stephen Miles shot from the Sunshine State, leaving Canberra coy. The Reserve Bank of Australia are an independent body and the government doesn't direct them. While rate cuts are off limits, price cuts are expected to be on the way. We need to keep working together to keep those prices coming down. We're expecting to see that over the next 12 months. Pensioners and those on Job Seeker will see their payments rise with routine indexation in March before the budget in May. In June, a review of minimum wage rates plus the first predicted interest rate cut or before tax cuts begin on July 1. It certainly gives us a lot of encouragement. We know that uh, people are still experiencing tough times. Those tough times, seeing renters pay more and homeowners slugged through insurance. $20 being given to you under these proposed tax changes, your rent alone going up $150. How will these stage three tax cut proposed changes will really alleviate all of those other factors? We're yet to see. With the Coalition yet to confirm their position, any debate so far has been between Labor and the Greens, who want to see the changes go even further to give more for low-income earners. We could use that money to increase job seeker, so people who are really struggling don't have to skip meals. What we won't be doing is uh, trading across different issues. We're focused on this. Charles Croucher, Nine News. A young woman was bombarded with two and a half thousand calls and text messages, luring her into a violent ambush at the hands of her own family. She was a victim of a so-called honour attack because of who she loved. The court hearing of the callous way she was left bleeding in the family's Adelaide home. A planned attack in the Sefton Plaza car park by those who should have loved her most. A 21-year-old woman held down and stabbed twice by her own father for daring to fall in love with a Christian man. The sinister plot commencing with more than 2,500 calls and texts to lure her to the ambush. Then, seriously injured and bleeding, she was forced into the back of a car between her mother and sister who hurled abuse and covered her mouth as she was driven away. Are you sorry? remorseful for what you've done for the role you played? Prosecutors say once home she was dragged inside, thrown into a shower, left suffering with her injuries. As the victim lay bleeding, prosecutors say she was given no medical assistance and no one rang triple zero until she was already in hospital hours later to complain about media being outside their home. That's when her father was arrested, caught on police body-worn cameras claiming she deserved it. All right, hop in the back. Now his lawyer says he's truly sorry and stabbed his daughter in the heat of the moment. He wants a merciful sentence. Her mother's written a letter of apology, but the court heard that is little more than a manipulation tactic. Prosecutors say the only fitting punishment for all but one of the six is jail. Beth Excel, Nine News. Fire has ripped through a factory in Lonsdale. Firefighters called to O'Sullivan Beach Road just after nine last night, forcing entry into the premises to battle the blaze, which took over an hour to put out. There were multiple high-performance vehicles inside, driving the damage bill up to $200,000. The fire is believed to have been started by accident. And a resident has been treated for smoke inhalation after a unit fire at Malins. Emergency crews called early this morning, arriving to see smoke pouring from the front bedroom. Firefighters managed to stop the blaze from spreading. 
Tonight, the largest Powerball prize in history is up for grabs, an eye-watering $200 million. And millions of Australians will be clutching their tickets, daring to dream they'll be the one to defy the odds. 200 million reasons to buy a lotto ticket. Thank you for your purchase and good luck for tonight's 200 Thank million record breaking draw. <laughs> Lines at news agencies across the city, all with fingers crossed for a piece of the jackpot Powerball prize. 200 million is mine. It's a big draw and I'm uh, really hoping, fingers crossed. I'm going to win it. A big draw prompting big dreams and a little unselfish thinking too. Help my family out, um, yeah. take them all on the holiday. Punters at Paralawi Plaza hoping their syndicates are a sign. If you're after a syndicate, this is the one. Owner Jane Clydesdale swears it's the way to go to improve your chances. A lot of pressure goes on Dylan because he always seems to twig lucky syndicates, so there's a few of him and even my sister's got into it with Polly's power hit tonight. We've won a couple of large amounts um, with you know, several syndicates that Jane runs here. We win something big, we all text her saying, guess what, your syndicate won, and, you know, a lot of money. Woodcroft is considered a lucky suburb. Two Division One winning tickets sold here last year, one worth more than $2.3 million. That ticket sold in a Saturday lotto draw just over a month ago. We just brought from here and is there from local community. But there's only one thing that's certain about tonight's Powerball. The odds of getting the winning numbers in the one game is about 1 in 134 million. There's still time to be in it to win it. The draw closes at 7. Good, Good luck, luck for tonight. tonight. Josephine Shannon, Nine News. Well, I guess we'll find out soon enough. Exactly eh? right. <laughs> Hopefully someone from the same. <laughs> that yes. would be wonderful, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, Tom Wren joins us now with what's ahead in sport. Now, Aussie cricketer Mitch Marsh, very popular winner of a big award last night. He certainly was, Brenton, taking out the Allen Border medal, and it was quite the speech as well. Hi, everyone. We'll have more on the reaction a little later. Also ahead, Matt promises he won't come up short in tomorrow's ODI clash against the Windies. Last footy's top umpire reveals a radical idea to avoid another incident like this. Thanks, Tom. We'll see you soon. Well, could getting your favourite food delivered to your door soon cost a lot more? In the news ahead, why services like Uber could soon be rising prices amid a push to protect workers. And Adelaide's housing market smashes records once again. Could it get even hotter? Adelaide house prices have struck a new record high, and now that interest rates are being predicted, interest rate cuts are being predicted this year, they could be about to see a fresh wave of growth. Finance editor Chris Collar has more. Australian home prices have now risen for 12 months in a row. Stunning when you think that interest rates have risen so much in that time. Over the last year, the median price in Brisbane and Perth soared by about $100,000 in one year and Adelaide rose by 68000 All three of those cities are now at record highs. Sydney's price growth has slowed dramatically, but it's still up 115000 over the year, while home prices in Melbourne are now falling and eating into its $30,000 gain for the year. So how can that be when so few people can afford to pay these prices? Well, the population is growing strongly and approvals to build homes are at near decade lows, not keeping up at all. It's simply this imbalance between supply and demand that naturally is going to be placing upwards pressure on, on prices despite the fact that there are clear affordability pressures and cost of living pressures uh, across the household sector. And while price growth is cooling in some cities, now that interest rates are likely to fall this year, a fresh wave of property price growth could follow. It's been labelled the heart of our health system. Today, a major milestone for Medicare. It's been 40 years since the scheme began, with Prime Minister Bob Hawke the first Australian to receive a card. Today there was plenty more for PM Anthony Albanese to celebrate though. The federal government announced a rise in the national bulk billing rate after incentives were introduced last November, making it cheaper for thousands of Aussies to see a GP. The cost of food delivery and rideshare trips could skyrocket by 35% under proposed changes to the gig economy. The unions dismissed the estimates as wild assumptions, but experts warn the price pain could be even worse. Plenty of us use one platform or another. Uh, yeah, Uber, Didi. I use Uber Eats and Menor, DoorDash. He used the app and got Uber Eats and McDonald's came to the pool. But there may be a big sting coming. Price increases could be 
up to 35 per cent. That's according to analysis commissioned by DoorDash into the proposed legislation that would improve pay and conditions for gig economy riders and drivers. These are conservative assumptions. If anything, the, the results are likely to be more severe. If correct, the 35% more would mean getting a medium cheeseburger meal delivered, jumping from $17 to $23. If prices went up by 35%, what would you do? Not do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, it's convenience, I guess. Pay that little bit extra. No, that's crazy. Consumers could spend uh, about a billion dollars less a year. These are wild assumptions. Uh, they're wrong. Describing them as a last-ditch scare campaign. The time for deliberation is over. The time to protect workers is here. Federal Labor has been attempting to introduce entitlements for gig workers for some time now. The legislation will be back before Parliament next week and the union believes there's widespread support for the change. If you're asked, you pay a little bit more to make sure that the worker that is safe is properly paid, most Australians would say yes. Heidi Murphy, Nine News. The first day of February brought another dose of easy sunshine across Adelaide. And Jessica Braithwaite, it's warming up further from here. It is, Kate. Bright blue skies across Adelaide today. We came in around the 26 degree mark and then we are going to take it further as we move towards Friday and the weekend. So for tomorrow, we'll likely be up into the high 20s and then on the weekend into the mid to low 30s. Now, it is a pretty long stretch without any proper rain on the forecast. In fact, there's no showers uh, on the forecast for at least the next seven days. But I will have all the details in the full report coming up soon. Great. Thank you, Jessica. She's campaigned tirelessly since the horrific murder of her daughter at the hands of an internet predator. Now, a South Australian woman has taken her fight straight to the global bosses of social media to do more to boost online safety. That story is coming up next. And it's a parent's nightmare, but every kid's dream how this little boy became stuck in a skill tester full of toys. Nine News, brought to you by Australia's number one selling vehicle, Ford Ranger. One hundred and ten South Australians have died through the state's euthanasia scheme in the years since its introduction. Among them, 73-year-old Lynn Wong after a lengthy battle with breast cancer. I think about it a lot, probably daily, um, and while I'm sad about it, I think that the service provided our family comfort knowing that mum had a choice in how she ended her life. 195 South Australians in total have been issued with a permit, the majority of them over the age of 65. Children and police officers are among nine people injured after a corrosive substance was thrown by a man in London. Police are still hunting for the suspect who initially attacked two children and their mother before turning on members of the public and officers who tried to help. You have blood on your hands. That was the message US Congress delivered to social media giants in a fiery hearing about online safety. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg was pushed to apologise directly to the families of victims of online exploitation, including a South Australian mother whose daughter was murdered by an internet predator. A humbling moment for one of the world's most powerful men. Would you like now to apologise to the victims who have been harmed by your product? Show them the pictures forced to apologise to the parents of social media's youngest victims. I, 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 I'm sorry for thinking that you were all in the world, knowing that that could go through the things that your families have, have suffered. Mark Zuckerberg and the bosses of the world's biggest tech firms pushed by the US Senate to do more to protect children from predators. The hearing highlighted Instagram's lack of safeguards to prevent people searching for child sexual abuse material. Mr Zuckerberg, what the hell were you thinking? As well as fears of a mental health crisis due to social media, with anxiety and depression spiralling amongst children and teens. Scientific work has not shown a causal link between using social media and young people having worse mental health outcomes. One of the photos in the crowd was of Adelaide schoolgirl Carly Ryan, killed by an online predator in 2007. Her mother, Sonia, travelled to Washington to take a stand. It was extremely emotional for me, um, today particularly on her birthday. She should be here. Zuckerberg, one of the few to show up voluntarily, others had to be subpoenaed. It prompted a rare show of unity between Republicans and Democrats. We know these kids are dying. You have blood on your hands. 
Despite both parties sharing their deep criticism of the social media networks today, US Congress is yet to pass meaningful legislation to regulate them and protect their youngest users. Doing so might change the internet as we know it. In Washington, D.C., Alison Petrowski, Nine News. Spiralling out of control, a paratrooper rehearsal has gone horribly wrong in Sri Lanka. An unexpected change in wind direction saw several parachutes become entangled with four soldiers crashing to the ground. Incredibly, they only suffered minor injuries. The decision to secretly dismantle and bury Australia's entire fleet of Taipan helicopters is continuing to baffle experts. Tonight, Nine News can reveal Ukraine first registered interest in the aircraft before Defence started pulling them apart. Once a prized air carrier for Army and Special Forces, Australia's billion-dollar fleet of Taipan helicopters is being unceremoniously stripped and disassembled destined for secret burial. It's a really strange decision which a lot of people are struggling to understand. It defies logic in a whole range of areas. The Taipans were retired following a crash in Queensland last July that killed four military personnel. But Ukraine registered interest in them through Liberal Senator David Fawcett at a NATO conference in Copenhagen in October, before defence began disassembling the choppers. It's something that should have always been um, considered when options were being looked at as to how the aircraft would be disposed of. Ukraine's official request came in December to no avail. It's a missed opportunity as of now. The Ukrainian ambassador Vasil Miroshnichenko says while his country is very grateful for Australia's support so far, the Taipans would have been used to evacuate injured troops from the front line, despite defence's concerns about their airworthiness. When we have uh, this massive Russian army out there uh, hammering Ukraine, I mean, the, the total risk profile and understanding of risk is different, right? They're a good helicopter for the sort of utility role that Ukraine needs them for. Defence saying it's not feasible to return the aircraft to operational state, given the costs, time and technical resources would be significant. My understanding is that there's potentially a dozen or even up to 20 that could feasibly be restored. Nine News found some of them in this Townsville hangar where the Taipans are being taken apart. For now at least they're headed for a deep pit in the same way these F-111s were buried in 2011. It's almost two years since Russia invaded Ukraine and there remains hope that Australia might reconsider its destruction of the Taipan helicopters. We should be not worrying about saving face, we should be trying to save lives. Andrew Proben, Nine News. A web of stars and space dust. These images are the latest from NASA's powerful James Webb Space Telescope. It shows in intricate detail 19 spiral galaxies near the Milky Way. It's hoped they'll advance our understanding of star formation. Well, we all know how difficult it is to get a prize from a skill tester, but imagine trying to catch a three-year-old child. Police were called to a Brisbane shopping centre to rescue Ethan on Saturday, who'd climbed in the prize chute with no plans to get out. Not liking their chances with the claw, officers opted to break the glass window to get him out. You want a prize? Which one do you want? The shopping centre says it's looking in, looking in to make sure that it's looking to make sure it's easier to open the machine in the future. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Ditching digital dating for the in-person experience. Still to come tonight, why more Aussies are deleting the apps and opting for traditional forms of looking for love. And are you in the market for a used car? Why the pandemic price pain on second-hand vehicles seems to be over. Good news tonight for Australians looking to bag a bargain with used car prices falling significantly. Erin Ramsey explains. There was an influx of new vehicles into Australia in March last year after pandemic supply issues were resolved and the price of used cars has been dropping ever since. As much as 1.5% each month with 2.1 million sold last year. Used cars are now on average selling for 67% of their original value down from a high of 75%. Sales peaked at more than 300,000 in July, up 24% from January. Toyota leading the charge with 16.3% market share, followed by Mazda and Ford. 
Ford Ranger came out as the top-selling vehicle, overtaking the Toyota Hilux. The Toyota Corolla, Mazda 3 and Hyundai i30 also in demand. We expect that those types of vehicles, bread and butter cars, in, in used will be the most popular and in line with household incomes. With prices on used vehicles on a downward trajectory, experts believe the trend will continue through the first half of 2024. It looks like finding love in person is becoming trendy again, with dating apps seemingly on the decline. Social researchers say the mobile meth have had its day during the pandemic, but young people want to cut back on their screen time. Timothy McClatchy is a single 42-year-old who's ditched online dating. I was scrolling, you know, an, an hour or two hours a day and it's, it's wasted time really. Um, I've got better things to do. A few years ago, the father of two decided to join social groups instead. A crocodile club called the Footscray Flickers and the Rubbish Runners who clean up the streets. I'm pretty good at picking up rubbish, not that good at picking up chicks. Share price data shows dating apps' heyday could be over. Match Group, which owns Tinder and Hinge, among others, hit its peak in October 2021. It's now fallen 78% from $75 billion to $15 billion. Meanwhile, Bumble was only listed a year ago and has already halved in value. Some reasons for the fall could be the fact that some of these platforms are moving to paid subscriptions. Another one, that young people simply want to start reducing their screen time dialing down the social media or having a quick break from it and they don't want their relationship building to sort of seem transactional like so many other interactions on the mobile can be. On the flip side, Darcy Todd says his speed dating business is booming. Straight out of lockdown, everyone was just looking to get out. So the market was just primed for it. Like I tried one and it just filled. Madeline Spark, Nine News. Well, sport is up next and Rennie, a striker star's ready to shine on the international stage. Matt Short's the man, Kate, and he cannot wait to take on the Windies tomorrow. More on that story coming up next as an emotional Mitch Marsh opens up on his top honour. And the 36ers prepare for a must-win weekend, but when will a new coach be named? Incredibly fun. Remarkably functional. And effortlessly stylish. Introducing the all-new Ford Puma. A compact SUV that really packs a punch. Looking good has never been this easy. Secure yours today. The all-new Ford Puma. Effortlessly stylish. Hello again. Fresh from taking out Australian cricket's highest honour, a confident Mitch Marsh believes his success can continue for years to come. The 32-year-old won his first Allen Border medal last night before winning over even more fans with an emotional and heartfelt speech. His phone's still running hot after a message which is ringing across the nation. I've had a few people come up and ask for photos today, this morning um, saying they're a bit fat too. Mitch Marsh, now an Allen Border medalist, a fairy tale end to his remarkable resurgence for Australia. And with the captain and coach who backed him all the way in the room last night, Marsh's gratitude came pouring out. You just, you believed in me. Um, and I don't really know. I, I can't thank you enough for just believing in me. And, um, I'm a bit fat at times and I love a beer, but... Um, <laughs> one of the things Ronnie said to me is that we can't win the World Cup without you. Um, as I'd just been left out of the team and it wasn't... At the time, I was like, oh, yeah, whatever, but um, it's those little comments that build up over a period of time where um, I guess you start believing that. He'd go on to win that World Cup, one of many accomplishments in the last 12 months, which have earned the 32-year-old love from fans he once believed hated him. Uh, you take it all in. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you certainly appreciate all of it. It's been an incredible six months, and um, yeah, you certainly want more of that. But Dad Jeff continues to keep Mitch humble. I called him, he was in a pool comp so, uh, at the pub, so uh, he had to call me back, actually. Um. <laughs> the two-time Belinda Clark medalist at only 26, Ash Gardner is embracing her tag as the new face of Australia's women's team. It's exciting to see where this group can get to and um, certainly if there's any leadership um, opportunities that I get to that come upon, um, that would be great. Joshua Dorn, Nine News. In the meantime, Matt Short's first audition to become Australia's new white ball opener awaits in tomorrow's opening ODI clash against the West Indies. The striker's skipper is set to potentially bat as low as seven, but hopes of climbing back up the order after being named the Big Bash's player of the tournament for a second straight season.
To be honest, I do feel um, you know more co confident at the top of the order, but um, you know any opportunity you get playing for your country, um, yeah, whether it be through the middle or at the top, um, I guess that's a challenge. Meantime, Will Pekoski has been ruled out of Victoria's upcoming Shield clash with South Australia after experiencing delayed concussion symptoms. The injury-plagued batsman struck during a second 11 match last week. Well, as Australia's women's side gets set for tomorrow's ODI in Adelaide, former skipper Meg Lanning has lashed out at scheduling, demanding a decision be made on the future of test matches in women's cricket. It's either more or you sort of don't go there at all because I think once every so often it's pretty difficult as a player to play and it's probably not going to be the best product. Lanning's contributions to the game will be recognised at Adelaide Oval in Saturday's short-form clash against South Africa. Well, football's most experienced umpire has tonight weighed in on how to avoid a repeat of the error that cost the Crows a finals berth. Brett Rosebury throwing up the idea of a captain's call but believes introducing a send-off rule would be fraught with danger. It was one of footy's most divisive moments. And while the Maynard Brayshaw clash had many seeing red, the league's top umpire is emphatic when talk turns to the idea of a red card. Definitely not a, not a fan for a send-off, so I am definitely uh, don't want to add that to the complex uh, nature of our job. There are moments in games that I think I see clearly and then I look back on replay and they're slightly different, so in that heat of the moment. With 508 games and nine grand finals under his belt, Brett Rosebery has seen it all. But there is one change that takes his fancy. The introduction of a captain's challenge, just like that in cricket and rugby league, in the hope it would avoid mistakes such as the one that crawled Adelaide's finals hopes last year. I'm not opposed to maybe one captain's call or something like that if you wanted to add some theatre to the game late in the game. The Dogs ramped things up at their pre-season camp on the Sunshine Coast, but Jack McRae will be sidelined for the next fortnight after suffering a low-grade hamstring strain. And after a tough few years with injury, Fremantle's Nat Fife is back training exclusively in the midfield with hype building around the Brownlow medalist. The way he's gone about it this pre-season is like, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to be around. Like He seems to be back to the Fife year of old. Braden Ingram, Nine News. Let's go to basketball. A do-or-die doubleheader awaits the 36ers this weekend with a pair of wins likely needed to keep their finals hopes alive. But beyond that, attention is intensifying on who coaches the team beyond next season. With the owner on hand to announce a new community initiative... It gives me great pleasure to announce today the launch of the Shooting Hoops Foundation. Launching a new era of success is still the Sixers' most pressing issue. The club um, has, in the recent past... Uh, performed on the court less than we would have hoped um, and as a diehard 36ers fan I feel that more than anyone so so we're, we're heavily aware of that and I think having said that we have to plan methodically for next season. That process is already underway with DJ Vasilovic locked in for a further three years but any decision on who's at the helm beyond this season will have to wait. We will make a, a, an announcement following the end of the season um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll keep it at that for, for today. But obviously we're highly mindful uh, of Scott's extraordinary performance. His record speaks for itself with Ninnis 5-1 in his last six games, but perhaps most importantly has been his ability to win over the locker room. Ninnis has been doing a great job making guys feel comfortable and just kind of buy in with that togetherness that we have. And we feel like we're, ge we're gelling as a team and everyone's playing their role. So I feel like, yeah, Ninnis has been doing a great job. Either way, a season-defining doubleheader awaits with Sydney and Tasmania standing between Adelaide and a potential playing berth. Obviously, it's possible, so a little bit, but yeah, it's really just taking it game by game. So we're just, yeah, focus on Sydney, take care of that, and then keep moving forward from there, really. Will Crouch, Nine News. Let's go to the world game. Some tactical genius from Ange Postacoglu has helped Tottenham rally for a crucial come-from-behind win. Spurs found themselves a goal down at half-time, prompting Postacoglu to make a double substitution and it paid immediate dividends with one of those subs scoring with his first touch. Timo Werner running a pinnock. Johnson! Stunning! Yeah, amazing. A third goal in seven minutes, securing the 3-2 victory for Spurs, which lifts them to fourth elsewhere. Liverpool is now five points clear at the top after a 4-1 thumping of Chelsea going nicely. And finally tonight, fears some of Australian soccer's biggest names have been caught up in a cyber security incident with personal information leaked. According to Cyber News Football, Australia leaked secret keys online, potentially making players, contracts, ports of a possible data breach and is investigating 
the matter. Those breaches have been commonplace recently, yeah. haven't they? Let's hope that's not the case. Thanks so much, Rennie. We'll see you tomorrow. Well, checking money matters now, and after hitting a record high yesterday, the ASX tumbled today. With more, his finance editor, Chris Collo. The eight-day winning streak ended emphatically today. The ASX down 1.2% or 92 points. Investors deciding yesterday's new record high for the index was a good reason to take some profit and back off a bit. All major sectors were lower, showing how quickly the tide can turn, with the banks and miners down sharply. And the Aussie dollar is sitting at two-week lows tonight, buying 65.5 US cents and less than 61 euro cents. Thank you, Chris. Well, an almost picture-perfect weekend of sunshine is on the cards. Jessica returns with the weather forecast next. Now, though, a look at tomorrow's speed cameras. Wake up and laugh with Adelaide's number one breakfast show. Rudits and Laws tomorrow on 104.7 Triple M. For the latest Adelaide news and traffic. Switch on a Dakin Alira X split system with advanced streamer technology to remove more than 99% of harmful indoor air pollutants and surround yourself with cleaner air this summer. Dakin, perfecting the air. Well, it is a beautiful evening for a barefoot beach walk along the coast here at Kingston Park. The water is glistening and the skies have been bright blue right across Adelaide, wherever you were today. Hopefully you got to see some of that summer sunshine. We came in uh, just around 26 degrees and it's cooled off now. It's around 24 degrees in the city and thankfully those winds along the coast have backed off a little bit now too. So across the suburbs, we did have a pretty uh, hefty sea breeze for much of the day and that did keep a lid on our coastal temperatures. So we saw 24 degrees at Glenelg, but a warmer 28 at Mawson Lakes. Clear skies through the north of the state today. We made 30 at Port Augusta and 27 at Wyala. A bit more cloud filtering in through the southeast, and it was 27 at Narracourt. On the charts, it is hello to the high pressure system continuing to float across there. That will warm things up for us further over the next two to three days. Interstate, we've still got the remnants of tropical cyclone Kiralee making quite a mess up north around northwestern Queensland now. But the capitals aren't faring too badly. Brisbane, a clear 33, and Darwin, a possible storm and 33 as well. So back to SA and it's a warm and dry day for us tomorrow. Wyala looking partly cloudy and 29, Port Pirie 33 and Clare 31. Renmark is looking to a warm 34 and there could be a little bit more cloud cover around from Nuriutpur with 30 degrees down to Mount Gambier uh, through the southeast there with 24 degrees. On metro waters, winds tending south to southeasterly in the late afternoon, reaching up to 20 knots north of Grange. So it is a warm end to the working week. We've seen those temperatures just gradually making their way up all week. And tomorrow we'll probably make it up to 30 degrees at Elizabeth and Golden Grove. Then we have 29 degrees on the forecast for Marion. It might start out a little bit cloudy across Adelaide during the morning, but it should clear up in the afternoon. We'll definitely be seeing that sun. In the city, we're going for a top of 29 degrees with an overnight low tonight of around 14. We're certainly going to see things lifting up a notch or two as we move into the weekend. So at this stage, we've got 33 degrees on the cards for both Saturday and Sunday. There is a change on the way. We'll probably see it turning up perhaps Sunday afternoon. It's a dry change, so we're not expecting any rain with it, but it'll likely drop those temperatures. So when we get to the beginning of next week, we're looking at temperatures dropping back down into the mid-20s for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So lots of sun on that forecast. I can't offer any rain for the garden still, uh, but uh, we'll certainly make the most of that sunshine. Oh, we sure will. Great stuff. Thanks, Jessica. And thank you for your company on Nine News this Thursday. You're up to date. We'll leave you now with a current affair. Enjoy your evening here on Nine. Good night.